Okay, once again, welcome everyone. Um, this is uh, Playback in Conversations. This is the third session um, hosted by the Center for Playback Theatre, Playback in Conversations. It is a series of talks and discussions on different topics in Playback Theatre. And for tonight, our guests, well, my tonight, our guests are Jordan Rosine and Heidi Winters Vogel, who recently edited and released Storytelling on Screen which is an online playback theater archive and guidebook. So I hope you've had a chance to glance through that and to look through some of the videos that they have linked to. Um, and today I wanna to thank them for making time to come here and have a chat with us. Today it's format is it's not so formal, it's, it's, it's quite casual. So uh, I invite you to also make use of the chat for any comments, any questions, um, Jordan, Heidi and myself, we will talk for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll open up the floor for your questions and comments. So let me spotlight the three of us. Okie dokes. Okay, so thank you once again, Jordan and Heidi for being here. Um, maybe let's let's start off by giving a space to you guys to share a little bit about yourselves. Who would like to go first? Go ahead, Jordan. Sure. I'm also putting in the chat a link to the archive in case folks haven't seen it yet, just so we get that out there. But yeah, my name is Jordan Rosine. I use they, them, and he, him pronouns. I am a theater artist and teacher, currently living and working in Duwamish lands in the city of Seattle, Washington in the United States. And um, I'm relatively new to playback. I first encountered it in 2017 during my graduate training in physical theater at Del Arte International um, with my teacher, Saida Trujillo. And we did a playback as part of our community-based arts curriculum and presented a couple performances in the playback style. And from there, um, I joined uh, Playback for People, uh, then Playback for Playbackers in the start of the pandemic, um, while at the same time having a two-year uh, teaching fellowship at Virginia Tech, where I taught acting and applied theater. And so I just continued to, to kind of deepen in my interest and passion for playback and in collaboration with great folks like Heidi, um, you know, get some, some stuff going on here and there. Um, I'm also the artistic director or one of two artistic directors of uh, the Ume Group, which is a physical theater company based in New York City, which I started in 2011. And um, we've also done playback and um, are amongst the, the companies featured in the archive. Um, we, besides playback, do work in buto, dance, and acrobatics, commedia dell'arte, clown, other kind of masked uh, theater forms. So that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> Thank you. So you yeah, Jordan and I met through Playback for Playbackers at the beginning of the pandemic. We've never actually met in person uh, physically, though we've done, um, I don't know, probably over a dozen uh, playback shows together. He was actually a performer in a, a, a traditional scripted show that I did last summer, that I directed last summer. Um, and, uh, we, and we collaborated on this, this project. I look forward to meeting you someday, Jordan for real. Uh, and um, so I am a, a, a theater professor. Um, I have been teaching theater, um, uh, directing, acting, movement, devised theater, theater for social change, oh, for about 25 years. Um, and uh, about 15 years ago, at the school I was teaching at, Ben Rivers came and introduced this thing that I'd never heard of called playback. 
and uh, I, I was intrigued. And, um, and so I uh, took my first playback class with Armand Volkus. Um, and, uh, and then I guess they say the, the rest is history. Um, been doing it since then. Um, uh, formed a group uh, in, in Virginia where I was teaching, where we did um, a lot of uh, community building work in connection with theater of the oppressed work and um, in different organizations around, around Virginia and the Eastern Seaboard of the United States. And uh, just before COVID in, in, in 2018, I moved and left my group uh, to the Midwest of the United States, uh, still Eastern time zone, um, but uh, just on the very edge. I'm actually closer to Clarissa in Chicago than I am to Virginia. I'm only a couple hours away, but we are an hour apart time zone wise. Um, and uh, so uh, one of my... Um, my issues with teaching playback has always been, I need someone to demonstrate it. I can't do it by myself. And in Virginia, I had my group and we would do uh, performances for my improv and for my playback classes and for the, the university. And it was, it was so nice to have the group to do that. And when I left my group behind and I'm trying to teach it out here, uh, uh, it, that was frustrating. So I had started to build a group out here in Indiana and, um, and then COVID hit. And uh, so I didn't have an in-person group. I had students that were interested that were learning and we were moving ahead, but I didn't have you know, a, a, a fallback there. And so I went really seriously online. Um, I was, I've been involved in three groups. So um, Playback for People, which again was originally Playback for Playbackers. Um, and then uh, a World Playback Theater, uh, which is the group that is the last in-person leadership uh, class in 2019. Um, and also Thursday Zoomers with, with Deb Scott and other um, playback luminaries, uh, Judy Swallow included. And uh, it has been so fun to be able to do playback with people around the world, um, with people uh, around the United States. Um, but I'm, I'm missing it, uh, missing being in person. Um, but anyway, that's, that's me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, I, I answer all the questions. I do. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, so you guys have not met yet in person and you guys met, uh, as part of an online playback theater group, uh, playback for people. Um, so, well, Perhaps let's begin with, with, with um, sharing a little bit about how you guys jumped into online playback theater um, and, and how that was for you guys. Uh, and then maybe, um, you know, what was the genesis of this, this collaboration, this guidebook collaboration? So I could say um, I had only done, <clears throat> excuse me, one in-person playback theater performance before the pandemic started and um, before online playback started to, to pick up. Um, I had recently joined Playback North America and the International Playback Theater Network and was um, in a couple Facebook groups and saw a post from Damilola Apatieri in Nigeria about his desire or interest to make a a group that was uh, playback for playbackers. And um, I didn't have a ton else going on and had some free time. So I was like, okay, I'll, I was pretty nervous, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. And so we were on a WhatsApp group or a Telegram, I can't recall, and coordinating schedules with people from, I think, 12 different countries at that time, um, trying to figure out a, a good rehearsal time. And we just started meeting and a lot of people from a lot of diverse backgrounds. Um, we started putting on shows. And one thing I really appreciate about it was that even though Dami Lola kind of was the organizing impulse, um, he was pretty in and out at first. And so we were very non-hierarchical, um, which resonated super strongly with what I had just 
spent the last three years doing at Del Arte, which was, you know, entirely non-hierarchical ensemble based theater practice. Um, so I appreciated that in a way we felt like an ensemble of, of co-leaders and we were all testing out different roles, rotating, conducting, acting, music responsibilities and um, different, you know, administrative functions to produce different shows for different audiences. Um, so that was kind of my entry point into online playback. I think my entry to online playback was um, with the World Playback Theater and um, uh, it started just as a, as a reunion. Uh, we could get together and, and do some playback and then we started performing. Um, and then as other calls went out for other groups, that's how I picked it up. So you were playing together and, and how did you know, this collaboration come about? Like what was behind the idea of, hey, let's make a guidebook? Heidi, do you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So we were both teaching uh, and teaching online um, at our separate universities. And, um, and this idea that we were performing online and maybe these could be recorded and we could show our students uh, clips. Um, we were inviting students to attend performances. So that was one way, but you know, what if we could, we could do something more formal? Uh, and then Jordan uh, answered a call from the Virginia Tech libraries where he was teaching for um, publishing online educational resources uh, and uh, he said, should we apply for this? And I said, yes, let's do it. And so that was really the impetus, uh, the need to meet student needs in classrooms. And uh, yeah, add anything, Jordan? I think um, we can get into this more too, but um, the difference in the material that kind of was available versus is available now in large part has to do with duration. We understand because of the like sensitivity of the storytelling and playback process that we don't often publish the stories of the tellers and that that's a bit of a like missed opportunity pedagogically speaking because so much of the playback process is the whole ritual, the whole thing, the telling and the enactment um, together, not to mention the conducting, which I think these resources and or this style of resource creates interesting opportunities to explore and discuss. Um, and so from the beginning, we had committed to the idea of uh, full length recordings and with the help of folks in the university libraries at Virginia Tech and in their legal department, we began to craft the, the, the appropriate permissions or um, kind of legal uh, consent form, which would make clear to the audiences that this was not just being recorded, but that it would also be released under a specific Creative Commons license. Um, everything in the archive is released under the Creative Commons share alike non-commercial by attribution 4.0 license, uh, which in layman's terms is just like uh, one of the most um, generous or non-restrictive kinds of um, copyright statuses that is available so that others could um, with these videos, with this archive, um, extract things, adapt things, change it all on their own, um, so long as they continue to attribute it and um, don't use it for commercial purposes. So, well, in a while, maybe you can take us through a few pages of the guidebook, uh, but uh, what I'm hearing and what I'm curious about is also that the, these are whole shows that you are sharing with the community. Um, and, and what's interesting is that there aren't that many, you know, full shows out there for us to, to look at. And I get your point that that's really important for us and, and really crucial for us to be able to observe, you know, the arc of the performance and also to, to take in some things about the conducting. Um, I, I really like that point. So it's not just about videos of particular forms and individual, you know, vignettes and stories. 
So let, let's come back to that um, in a little bit, because I think in the forward, um, Joe was also saying, was also making a point about, um, you know, how video recording is often uh, not as immediate and we lose, we do lose some things, but yet at the same time, there are, all, there are some good things to be had when it's a whole show that you can sample and observe and explore. Um, so would you do us the favor of taking us through um, some parts of the book? How is it structured? Um, you know, what else is there for us to take a look? Um, I know there are links and, and, and diagrams, and I'm going to bring us to one of the diagrams much later on, but yeah. So this is the Storytelling on Screen uh, archive guidebook. Uh, and um, what's important is this is accessible uh, by everybody from anywhere. Uh, it is completely open access, though it comes through the Virginia Tech libraries. Um, I, will, I will navigate, Jordan, if you want to talk. Sure. So we've got some lovely cover out there, um, the various acknowledgments, and then um, I think the this page is interesting because it just explains a little bit about the copyright um, statuses, et cetera. Uh, but probably of most import would be the table of contents where you can begin to see the scope of the guidebook itself. Um, we have, as Michael mentioned, a uh, forward by Joe Salas. Um, we give a little introduction to the project. Um, we have a page dedicated to each of the main performances in the archive which gives a little context um, and also provides outlines with hyperlinks that are time coded. We'll show that in a second because um, that's a pretty handy feature. Uh, and then we go for about 20 or 30 pages explaining as best we can different concepts, uh, roles and forms that you might see featured in the archive. Uh, so if we go to the uh, outline maybe of one of the shows, we can see um, the production credits, that context, and then these forms, which are hyperlinked here, would take you to um, the description of that form in the uh, guidebook itself. And the below uh, outline on the next page, Heidi, thank you, would give you access to specific um, portions of the video on YouTube. Um, all the videos and are hosted both on VTech Works, which is Virginia Tech's institutional repository, and are there in a downloadable format, um, but also perhaps in a more user-friendly way on YouTube, where besides seeing the whole thing contiguously, you could use these chapters to go more directly to a specific thing that you want to see. It's also worth noting that in choosing where to make these chapter marks, we've um, we've uh, begun each clip with the conductor um, maybe asking a question or um, shifting the the maybe there's an intervention of one kind or another, but it's whatever precipitates the storytelling by the teller. So that again, we can kind of begin to focus on the event as a whole versus just like, oh, random person telling story. Um, but you would see uh, the telling, the enactment, and the debrief, if there is one. Um, the clips don't automatically stop. So if you are interested in one thing in particular, you'll maybe want to note that time code and just pop back to the guidebook when you're done. Um, but also you could, if you're engrossed, <laughs> watch <laughs> the whole. Uh, again, if you click on the guidebook links on the right, it'll take you here internally in the guidebook to the description of that form or concept, which you see in bold. Uh, and that's the outline. Should we, Heidi, go to other? Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, one thing. Um, this is designed for people like you that are very playback savvy, but also for teachers who uh, want to include playback in classes who are not deeply familiar with it. 
So uh, some of it may seem pretty basic, but recognizing that we're, we're, we're dealing with a broad audience in terms of usage on this. Where did you want me to go next, Jordan? Maybe uh, some of the forms or concepts. Okay. Stop here. Let me know where you want to go. <laughs> sure. Um, there we go. So, so you'll see in many of the, the descriptions of concepts that we've done our best to synthesize some of the extensive existing literature out there on playback. That was for me a pretty exciting part of this process to um, bring a kind of scholarly approach to um, understanding the literature and then um, writing for an audience like Heidi was saying that could be broad or more general, like, for example, undergraduate students in an applied theater class or uh, something like that. I've even assigned bits of it to my current high school improv class, and they've seemed to understand and resonate with it pretty well. Should we go now to any example of a form? So here, uh, maybe further. Okay, examples of sociometry. So that works as well as anything because you can see here that again, we give a description of the thing in question, but then also provide a uh, link out to those examples. So all three performances which constitute the archive had some example of sociometry. In the case of Pangea's playback theater, it kind of happened twice. And so you could click on any of those links and go to that specific section. Why don't we go a little further? This is the leaf diagram that Michael was interested in we could take a look at later. I was really interested starting to read uh, Jonathan's uh, ideas about narrative reticulation and uh, felt like, oh, if it's uh, based on a leaf, might as well draw it or diagram it like a leaf. So uh, whether or not that is more of a parallel V-nation or a you know, reticulating V-nation is, I think, a fair question and might relate to the uh, usefulness of it as a form of analysis. But I thought, hey, that's interesting. Okay, so here again are more of the forms which you can see examples of. Uh, and I think another advantage or point of interest about this project is to compare how different groups would approach the same form. So there's only one or two because the repertoires of forms were so diverse, um, but fluid sculpture, as you can see, everyone has some version of. And so, uh, you can actually compare these five different instances of fluid sculpture to get a sense for the more subtle differences and variation, um, and perhaps for the way in which different ensembles make different agreements about um, how they're going to do a given thing. That's all I can think in the main guidebook, Heidi. Should we go to the appendix where we talk about adding to the archive, maybe something like that? It would be towards the very, very end. So as we explained, that kind of Creative Commons process was pretty uh, extensive. Um, but again, we want to make space for this project to continue or evolve and for other things, other performances to be a part of the archive if possible. Um, we admit that you know three is good, but also has limitations. Um, and in curating or choosing these particular performances, we were in some ways bound by um, our proximity to these companies and our ability to effectively implement the consent process with the audiences. Um, but here we provide some of our process. We provide the artist contributor agreement, which is the language that we used um, to, to solicit this permission. Um, and I think we provide our emails and other kind of contact information there. Um, we 
I'm no longer at Virginia Tech, so we won't have necessarily the support of that institution in creating a second edition of this. Uh, but if there was momentum or other people had things to contribute, we could certainly do round two and have a more even more robust um, archive and, and set of comparisons. Uh, and something else to say about that? Heidi, am I missing something? Maybe. We've already added uh, a couple links to other recordings uh, that have people have offered. Uh, so if you have a recording that you would like to add it, we can add that here. Uh, and so that people have other full uh, performance recordings. In this case, these are the few that we were aware of that existed prior to this project. Um, I think mostly these are examples of in-person performances. Um, and then we further stipulate at the top that like the purpose again of this project is full length recordings, minimally or unaltered or edited. Uh, and um, yeah, well, this is sort of visionary. We could add here, we could add here. Mm -hmm. um, this does represent like a lot of work and time. And um, like I said, we'd need some more publication support or um, partnership to do it to the same standard if we were to make a second version. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, talking about standards, uh, well, my impression of this, it's, uh, it's, it's really structured. It's really informative. Um, anyone from a beginner to, to, to someone who's experienced can pick up something from it. Um, and, and I'm, I'm wondering, well, and I really, really like that that's that section on concepts where you talk about, where you talk about narrative reticulation, where you talk about the three circles. Um, how, how much time did this take? What, what were, what were some of your challenges? Um, and, and, um, yeah, how did you feel about each other at the end of this? I can't, it, it took about a, a year in total putting this together from um, inviting companies and scheduling uh, all, the, all the work that was going to be done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I don't, we also were, you know, we're doing performances during this time. Uh, we were working on a scripted play. Uh, so we were spending a lot of time together. Um, I can say I, I I don't know that we ever got to the point where we just needed a break from each other. We didn't have that opportunity, really. Maybe <laughs> I've really enjoyed working with Jordan on this. He d brings a different perspective than I do, um, and um, it's been it's been a, a wonderful journey of of learning mm -hmm. uh, and seeing what other people are doing. I wanted just to to quickly go back uh, to the additional the additional resources. One of those was uh, the Greek group, um, uh, no, now I've lost it, um, Tiles doing their, um, that was an online a Zoom recording as well. So most of those recorded there are in person, but there is also that one that we added after we had gotten everything else done. So that is an option available. So challenges, Jordan. I mean, uh, there were so many different, um, ways that we collaborated on this as you know event producers and kind of you know logistical <laughs> managers as as co-writers and uh, editors so we we got to experiment with a a, a a broad spectrum of collaboration and i think it was you know overall very successful and uh, i'm i was likewise very happy to work with Heidi. I think she brings so much experience with playback and maybe it's my, you know, fresh eyes or fresh perspective that mm -hmm. asks the kind of like silly questions, you know, like what is what, what is this? Um, and then I also just have a, 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 a appreciation for um, like pedagogical scaffolding of, of concepts and ideas, but then also this sort of scholarly writing and trying to use citation um, to pay respect to those who have come before and 
um, give a sense of the breadth of the field as it stands. Great. Um, I think that's very much appreciated as well because we know that's not very often done. Uh, so this is a valuable addition. And as I'm reading through the, uh, the guidebook, it, it seems so coherent and it, it's, it's like one person wrote it. It's, it's like a singular voice. It's very structured, very informative, and it sounds like one person. So I have to say that's, that's a wonderful um, job that you guys have done. Um, it's, it's, it's in some sense quite comprehensive. Everything's there. It's, it's brief, succinct, but everything's there. Um, was there anything that you wanted to put in but decided not to for various reasons? And perhaps by extension, um, early on you talked about part two, perhaps round two. What could round two be like? One thing that comes to mind is just on the subject of the forms. Um, our companies have even broader repertoires of forms than happen to be in the performances that are featured in the archive. So at some point, we did make the specific decision to limit the writing in the guidebook to that stuff that would be in evidence in the videos. Um, so. And I'm sure there are even more forms beyond those that we're aware of that people are using and playing with. So that, I suppose, is a, a choice. Uh, yeah, the, we use so many more forms online than we do in person. And that kind of ballooned on us uh, and trying to figure out what, who originated these forms, uh, you know, the, the, the chain of ownership on them. And I, and I, you know, we've already discovered we've, there's at least one that we missed, uh, just giving credit to, to Igor and his company for, if this were a dream, um, we need to add that back. We need to add that in. And, um, and I, and I contacted, we contacted a number of you, uh, about where did you get this form? Uh, how did this, how did this evolve? Um, that, that sort of, um, detective work was interesting. I, uh, th that, that so many of the forms that we describe are not necessarily done in person. And some of the in-person forms are not included because we don't have examples of them. That is kind of a, a regret that I don't know how to deal with, uh, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, so, well, hopefully round two comes up um, and perhaps we could be able to find some kind of support for you guys to continue to do this wonderful work. Um, I, I just want to bring us back to the full length shows that you guys have links to. Uh, is, there a, uh, is there a criteria for, for, for people to send that in? Like, is, is there something they're looking at besides that they are full length for anyone else who might be interested to share? So there's that tricky question of the audience consent. Um, we do currently have and maintain control of a YouTube channel, which is where the, the videos are hosted. And so while we can't um, quickly or easily add things to VTech Works, that institutional repository, we could at any point add to the YouTube channel. Um, but we would hope again that um, there was proper permission. The YouTube channel is not itself inherently under that Creative Commons license. So um, work on YouTube isn't typically downloadable. Um, so there, I suppose, is a, a, a bit of a lighter expectation, but there would still be some uh, necessity of like a permission from the tellers to have their work, uh, their, their stories, um, viewable publicly. I think that's really important. This is not for all performances uh, because you know you all are very well aware that the, 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 the sense in the room is of, of, of privacy, of care. Um, it's a container that is uh, invaluable and it, it can really change the nature of a playback performance. Uh, and so, that is needs to be re respected and uh, we need to make sure that everyone is aware and comfortable with their stories being shared widely. 
Thank you. It's interesting Heidi mentioned that because that was also a um, a question of just how do we get out all this information about Creative Commons and licenses in a succinct way that doesn't interfere with the the ritual, doesn't interfere with the the warm up or the feeling of crossing the threshold of participation. You're gonna release my story. Where? What's happening? Who's gonna see it? This is complicated. What? And now you want me to tell a story? <laughs> um, that was an ongoing challenge. Um, and negotiation, uh, but we, I think, made it work to, to pretty good success. <laughs> I would also um, maybe ask Steve to, to speak into that. Um, the Pangea performance included Steve. Did you feel like it changed the nature of your show because of the recording and the, 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 act, the, the guidebook um, use of this show? Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew it was being recorded, um, but I didn't know. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone, by the way. Welcome. Welcome from the, the northeast of England. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I didn't properly appreciate. I was probably told, but I probably I didn't properly appreciate um, how it was going to be used. And so I'm, you know, I, I feel quite honored to be part of this resource in, in that way, really. Uh, I really appreciated the uh, the work that I did with Hannah uh, and others as part of Pangea over this last year, uh, various projects that we did. Um, so I was glad to see it captured in 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 that way. Um, I don't know. It 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 it's it, as I'm listening to you. It, 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 I'm making a few notes, and and the whole thing about you know consent is, is one of them. Um, and I've been interested in hearing what you know how you found a, a path through it, partly because I'm involved in a project um, which is a, about uh, frontline NHS workers. We got some funding from the, the, the National Health Service um, in the UK to do some shows for frontline uh, nurses and care workers on on COVID wards, um, but but <clears throat> via Zoom. Um, and part of the deal from the funder was that these would be made into films to celebrate mm. the, the dedication of staff, uh, you know, over this last 18 months and how staff themselves have been impacted by caring for others and, and, and their own family experiences. And, and we kind of wrestled with this quite a lot, The because we have the NHS, which is the big kind of care organization for, for the UK. Um, then we have the film company, and then we have the, the playback company. And we all seem to have slightly different position on, on how, how to kind of um, honor and respect the, 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 the personal material of, um, of, of the audience and and one of the things we've struggled with quite a lot is that you can ask for consent up front you know on the google doc form where you book up to come to the show this film will, will be recorded um please indicate that you uh, acknowledge that but we know in playback about the process of being involved in a show means that you might find yourself <clears throat> moved to tell a story that you didn't expect to tell and so from the playback perspective, we've, we felt we've argued very strongly that consent is only really meaningful after the performance, mm -hmm. you know, after you've participated and after you, you be, because, <clears throat> um, and I was reading Joe's um, forward, the, forward there, they, these were all people who've not been involved with playback before. Mm -hmm. So, so they, I, I didn't really feel that they could give informed consent beforehand. Um, they might know what recording is and they know <laughs> they know about consent in terms of being a, a medic or a therapist, but to actually be a participant in a playback show. So, sorry, that's a long answer and, and not a kind of a yes or a no, but, um, you know, we're struggling with the, some of the same issues. Thank you, Steve. Um, I, I remember also, Heidi, uh, one, one of your shows where I think I think, if I remember correctly, I, I shared a story and, and it was after the show that you asked me that you that there was an email that was asking us for permission, something like that. So it, I think, yes, it did make sense 
after that because after I trolled and then I had to think about, okay, this, now that I've given into the impulse, do I really want this out there? Yeah, we did two levels of consent uh, that, that your face would be recorded uh, you know, at the beginning and then at the end, are you, do you still want this story included? And that was, that I think was really important, but just as Steve says, you're, you're, hopefully you're so into the event and, and, and inspired by the stories and the narrative articulation that things come out and, you know, people can have second thoughts yeah. and um, we would have been willing to edit stories out of the, uh, we, we were trying to do minimal editing, but at a, a teller's request, we would have removed a story. We didn't have anyone that, that made that choice. Well, I, I remember um, a teller from a show that I did two weeks ago. Uh, this person was new to playback and in the evaluation form, she had written, um, well, the recording may make people uncomfortable with sharing. Um, and perhaps now that you've mentioned it, it was something about second thoughts because she did share something that was deep and emotional. Um, and we could see the emotions on, 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 on screen. So yeah, the, I think perhaps you're making a really good point about you know, after the post-show consent um, is something really important. I, and I will add that I don't think any of the stories in, in this guidebook are as deep as many stories I have encountered doing playback. Uh, so it, it very well may have, people were more reticent, which I think is fine. It gives us the examples that we need uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't really violate anybody's privacy. So, you know, that's a balance. So I think, you know, in, it's, it's almost coming to two years since you know, so many of our community have, have dived into this online playback. Um, right at the start, we were already talking about the ethics of playback. We had a couple of sessions, discussions, um, and, and, and this guidebook, I guess, came also at a really good time. Some of us are going back into in-person. So this is also a, a, a take stock time, uh, is my feeling. Um, in a while, we're going to, you know, invite the the uh, our friends, our audience, to uh, come up with comments, questions for for the two of you. Uh, but while they're thinking about it, in your own experiences, if you could say briefly, um, what is the difference uh, for you, uh, online and and in person playback, um, perhaps advantages, disadvantages, or just the feeling about about these two. Um, Variations forms. So, who would go first? I can say um, that I think a lot of it has to do with the acting and music and the relationship of um, the actors. We are, of course, deprived of a spatial relationship in the online world. And so, um, it's interesting, I'm teaching, as if I mentioned already, a playback unit in my improv class at a high school right now. And actually tomorrow, um, Heidi will be a guest conductor. We'll do a, a hybrid version where the audience is on Zoom and all the actors are in a theater together. And so I'm hoping to recover a little bit, excuse my cat here, <laughs> a little bit of that um, play in space, which I think is, is lost in some of the the online work and or play with each other, the sort of partnership or complicite, um, which uh, is not impossible, but so uh, complexified or difficult in the online environment. I would also add that um, most of the, the open playback performances that on Zoom that I've played in, the audience has been primarily uh, has been primarily playbackers, and that has not been the case for in-person performances. And I really miss people discovering playback and um, sort of being transformed uh, from the beginning to the end of a show. Not that that doesn't happen with playbackers, but you know we know what we're what we're seeing. Um, that's a disadvantage. 
uh, an advantage is um, I get to, to, to see you guys perform all over the world. I get to work with performers from all over. And that has been a huge gift. Um, and uh, I think it's probably coming out of, of COVID. We'll, we'll have that each have a list of the good things and the bad things and playback is on that list. Yeah. So that could be round two or round three of this uh, work. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we've got we've got a bit of time left for our friends to share comments or, or, or questions. Um, so the floor is open, folks. Who would be the first to say something? Johnny? Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, this is really fascinating. I'm, I, I was keen to hear um, an example, if you have already, of how you've used it in teaching, how you've used the resource in teaching. Good. Oh, you want to go first, Heidi? <laughs> uh, either way. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Uh, I um, shared, I was uh, teaching an introduction to theater class this past semester, and uh, we spent a week on applied theater. And as usual, I talked about playback theater and, uh, and it, 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 they nod, the students in the class nod, and, and I think they've gotten it. This year, I played a clip. <laughs> I played a 15 minute uh, story and, and it was a long, it was a big chunk of class. And, and, and then when it was done, I said, so <laughs> what's your feedback on this? Uh, and they're like, ah, oh, I get it. I didn't before. It was, it was immediately obvious that I had not been explaining it very well um, uh, or it's just impossible to 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 demonstrate without having a group there. Um, I also incorporate storytelling and sociometry into my classes into whatever class I'm teaching and several of them said oh I get what you were doing <laughs> uh, from the first day when they had to share a story with someone they didn't know in the class. Uh, so uh, yeah uh, I've I was surprised how quickly it worked. <laughs> I've been using the the resource a lot in this particular unit in my high school class, as I mentioned. But one of the interesting advantages, too, as we're further coming out of the pandemic, I'm teaching in person, but we still are on high alert for for COVID cases. And I've had many students quarantining and out here and out there. And so one of the more interesting applications that I've made of this, you know, full length resource is that now that we have not just the enactment, but the stories captured, I've been able to assign uh, as an asynchronous makeup homework, go listen to someone's story and create your own solo playback enactment of that piece so that they get some practice on their own submit a video to me of you playing back so and so's story from this time marker in in the video and so that's been an interesting fun unexpected kind of application of the project yeah nice. I, just, I, I can imagine you know I, I i would never have shown students um, videos of in-person playback because you know it's 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 most of the time it's from far away there's no context there's, you know but with 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 recordings of zoom playback you know some of the work is really good and and it's really upfront and, and that's really creative and i think there's a, a good bridge like if they see this right now what do you make out of that in 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 person let's try and make that work and and magic may happen So who has the next question? Yes, Deb. So intrigued by the idea of the actors being in the same space and the audience being on Zoom. And um, have you actually done that? And could you describe what that's like? Um, or is this something you're anticipating? Tomorrow night, <laughs> we will. Uh... Oh, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> We'll, we'll let you know how it goes. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, if uh, if Deb, if you're interested, um, Mina's group, Mina from Korea, their group does this. So everybody else is on Zoom, and their actors are are in the same space, 
and when you're watching them, there's another small picture frame at this in the corner, which is the the musicians. So that's it, it's really interesting that work. Um, I should say also that the Ume group has done the opposite. We've had commissioned performances in retirement homes where the audience is all live in one room together and the actors are zoomed in from different states. And there, and I expect tomorrow, there's a bit to be negotiated in terms of correctly muting and unmuting or taking up or down volumes such that we don't have interference, microphone interference. Um, so that's just something to be on the lookout for. <laughs> right. I, uh, well, coincidentally, I did that last year. So wow. the seniors were in the same room and my actors were at home, uh, but I was there with the seniors. So there was still that, that interaction and that um, caregiving. Um, so we, we, we should talk about that sometime. It's, it's, it's an interesting variation of sorts, or hybrid, I guess you could call it. I think I, I, I'm, I'm just blown away by the creativity that that COVID has brought out in the playback community and problem solving. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, who's next with another question or comment? And if you're off camera, feel free to, to write into the chat. I think we have one from Steve. Um, is competency in online <coughs> playback different from competency in internet? Yeah. Playback? Thank you, Michael. I, and I'll, I'll try and be brief. Obviously, there are different kinds of skills. I think there are some of the same skills. There's a bit of an overlap, but there are different skills. Um, and I'm aware now when I have discussions with colleagues here in the UK um, of, of people who've only ever done playback online. They, they've, they've done the foundation course, they've formed a company, they're doing shows, uh, continuing online. and and. And, and, and there's a sort of a question to, to put it in a slightly different way. Would, would such a person, um, would we feel that such a person um, can automatically or easily make the switch to working, to doing playback in theater space, having only previously learned online? Um, and there's a lot of debate about that. There is indeed, there is indeed. Jordan, Heidi, what are your thoughts on this? And this is, of course, we've been having debate about this as a community, as the playback center, uh, and it's it's a good question. And uh, I'm not certain we have a complete answer for it yet. Um, I certainly think there will be transition anytime you're doing one thing. I mean, how bad was I starting off on Zoom uh, and and you know just not being able to touch somebody and and and, and having to figure out how to how to work with that. Um, but the the basic, the heart of playback is is there on Zoom. Um, uh, we're we're caring for stories. We're building containers. We're honoring the ritual, uh, and so though it's a different way into it, uh, I do think it's valuable, and that folks who learn it online will adjust to in person and maybe joyfully discover how wonderful, even better than the, than online playback it is in person. And I might just like add, funny? sure, I might just add as folks were talking that the three circle theory seems like an interesting lens to explore the differences between online and in person in that, for example, there is still the art, the ritual, and the social interaction. But then, for example, the social interaction, you can't have a post-show follow-up chit-chat kind of thing. In the ritual, there are like technicalities of turning on and off your cameras that don't apply to being in person. And yet, perhaps in person, other kinds of um, bodily postures, energetic kind of attitudes that would help to um, bring that seriousness um, and sensitivity to the space. And then likewise, in terms of the artistry, I think maybe that's the area there is most difference in that as Heidi and others have already mentioned, the repertoire of forms is so much bigger and 
different in online than it is in person, that um, it would certainly take um, a, a resensitization to space, to um, to relationship, um, the vocal dynamics, you know, that are available to you in person, which are not available to you in Zoom with the limited audio processing, et cetera, um, means that there's more opportunity um, to articulate different kinds of <laughs> oral <laughs> realities <laughs> uh, in person. So I think using yeah three circle theory and or any of the other concepts to make specific that transition from in person to online, from online to in person, might help to address those competencies that Steve asked about. Well, before uh, Nir speak, uh, speaks, I, it's, it's interesting that that Steve used the word competency because that's that's coming from, you know, the 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 theoretical part of playback, right? Like like it's a very syllabus word, it's a very curriculum word. Um, and and I think it's to me it's also interesting to be curious about how much um, groups have been diving into things like the three circles, the narrative reticulation, especially if their first um, um, interaction with playback is online, um, because there's so much work to go into making the forms work, into uh, working with one another and 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 all of that performative stuff. But what about the other side? The other side of playback, the 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 ritual, the arc of performance, the three circles. How much time is is spent on that? And and perhaps that ought to be um, a a more clearly articulated competency. In fact, for online playback, maybe. Um, near, please. Yes. So. Uh, oh. One second. I would like to to thank uh, um, to thank Heidi and Jordan for um, for their wonderful uh, work and uh, especially uh, I'm it's 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 uh, it's great to see how how um, how, how how you took like the, the the online thing that was something a little controversial in the beginning. Uh, people didn't know how to <laughs> how to swallow it. Uh, people from the community, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was like a mutant that uh, they didn't know what uh, how to look at it and what to do with it. And um, and suddenly you you took it and you you put it on the uh, on like you teach it and you are like uh, putting it on the um, like giving it like. Like permission, uh, academic permission, kind of okay, in my point of view. So um, I think it's uh, it's one step forward, and um, and I and I uh, and appreciate your work because I know that as a person that wrote some books, I know how how, how difficult it is. So uh, I appreciate it so much, and uh, and thank you for this great contribution to to the community and to the playback itself. I think it's a uh, it's an important step um, on on this uh, uh, crazy journey that we are uh, having now. But uh, but if we can make something good from it, uh, we can take the lemon and make it a lemonade. So so let's be it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nir. And um, well, Nir, you and Jerry also have a, a, a guidebook of sorts that came up quite early on. Um, if you want to share the link in, in the chat, please feel free. Uh, okay, I will, I'll try to find it and I will, I will share it. Yeah, <laughs> you have Johnny, Johnny's comment. Yes, thank you. Um, so I think we've, we've come to the end of tonight. Uh, if you have more comments or questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. You can email, email us and, and uh, I'll send them on to Heidi and Jordan. Um, so, well, thank you very much, Heidi and Jordan, for making time to share this with us. And of course, for coming up with this uh, amazing resource. Um, I really hope that, you know, in the years ahead and the months ahead, there will be some form of round two, round three. Um, and if anybody has any um, lines to support, please get in touch. 
Um, and everyone else, whether you're on video or video, thank you very much for coming tonight. Please look out for the next session of Playback in Conversations. Um, and if you would like to, come off mute and let's hear some real applause for everyone that came tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thanks, Michael. We'll see you the next time. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Thanks, Michael. Well, everyone. Bye Good bye. to see you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. See you. Bye. Yeah. Meeting. Get in touch. Uh, yeah.